welcome to another Wargame review from theplayersate.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we played a game from Compass Games. This is actually from 2017, and it's called Lion of Judah. And this is the war for Ethiopia. This game spans two different campaigns in Ethiopia. It's the initial Italian invasion and colonization in 1935, and then there was kind of the the British liberation in 1940-1941. So there's two separate games. You play on the same map, but there's kind of two different sets of counters. You use some of them um, in both of the games, but there's you know, different Italian forces for the early game and the late game, and the initial one game kind of uses all these tribal forces, and then the second game also has the British forces as well. So you get a lot in the box. Um, this is designed by Javier Romero, and we played the, uh, the 1935 scenario, which is the Italians, in theory, rolling in with their really good equipment and excellent Italian military training. Yes. And, uh, and kind of taking over and colonizing the place, which is what happened. Um, it, the excellent training is really focused around dice rolling. Yes. So, so it's, it's the traditional hex encounter war game. Uh, so I was surprised at how easy it was to learn. Yeah, this was a very... I felt like we got into this one really quick. Yes. Like, we literally did not read... I didn't read those Anything. Books. Yeah. And we played this scenario in about four hours. Yeah. And if you had read the scenario beforehand and the, and the rules were behind, it would be much quicker than that as well. Right. Um, now... And we usually don't do that. No, we usually, at least look at the rules. Usually, I'm more prepared, but it was kind of a you just move, spur of the moment. We're in a new location. Yeah, it's my new digs, which we'll get so. sorted out eventually. But this one was a really, really cool game. But it was, yeah. I felt like, whilst it had a lot of cool, new, and different pieces of chrome with it, was a very traditional hex encounter style war mm -hmm. game. You got your counters. You know, you have a few stacks of them with some leaders, and it's moving and attacking. Um, you're trying to take victory hexes, which are kind of like the capital cities and the provincial um, capitals, uh, kind of like the tribal capitals. Um, that's what the Italians is then trying to go in and take it all. And then you have the Ethiopian forces that are trying to just defend, defend, defend for their lives and put up, um, you know, pointed, and very specific counterattacks if and when right. they can be opportunistic about it. Counterattacks that guarantee that you will lose units. Yes. Because I don't so much. I, I was the Ethiopians, and I didn't really care about losing a unit or two. Yeah. There's, there's but a, I wanted to force you to lose a unit. Yes. Because that that was one of the victory conditions. Yeah. So the victory so, conditions for this initial scenario was I had to, as the Italians, capture the victory hexes basically, and those are all worth a lot of victory points. Mm -hmm. But. I have to do it without taking losses. Each step loss that I take is negative one victory point. And that was poor decision making and poor dice rolling. More so the poor dice rolling. So bad. You and rolled a lot of ones and twos. And you try to, it's a game where you have a CRT with odds based combat and you're trying to get favorable column shifts, have good odds, and then you roll a dice based on those odds. and. So, so you do get the randomness from the die roll. Everything else you could set up and get in really good positions as much as you can. You still got to roll that dice, and if you roll the ones, it's going to go poorly for you. Yeah. Well, and, and also the terrain really, the terrain played a huge role in this game more so than I think in other games that we've experienced. A lot of the times I was getting sometimes two column shifts, or when I was attacking out of the mountains, you get the plus one to the dice roll. So that was pretty interesting. It was it, 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 it that was. The terrain played a key role in this game. And, and that's something that I really enjoyed about this game, is that as, as easy as this was to learn as true, mm -hmm. you know, if you played a war game, you'd be able to pick this up. But there were so many cool little tidbits from, you get a DRM from this, you get a column shift from this, or, you know, in order to activate my tribe, I have to roll a dice, mm -hmm. you know, but then as the Italians, I can give them these kind of bribe, resource yeah. points as a bribe, and it makes it harder for them to activate. 
So there's a sacrifice on my part doing that, but I get a benefit from it. So there's a lot of these cool different bits and pieces that really set this game apart from some other games that we've played that I was like, now this really stands out on its own, yeah. and I had a really good time with this. So, so along that same lines, the really innovative thing with this design is the tribal counters. All the tribal counters, and, and we'll look at them here in a moment, close up, all of the tribal counters, I don't even know what's in my stacks. Yeah, it's so I have units mark. that have, has a big question mark. They can be a zero attack unit, one defense, or they can be up upwards. I think some of the red guys were fours. I don't even know what's in my own stack. And that's what's cool. Because we've played games where there's like, oh, there's these hidden counters. Yeah. But one side knows what they are, because I'm like, it's a bluff, or it's kind of like a decoy. But in this one, you didn't even know your yeah, own. I didn't even know my own. And you can't examine my stack yeah. to, to decide, hey, am I going to attack you? I, I thought that was fascinating. It was really cool, because you'd get into... I would be like, well, I'm doing this, I'm going for it, and then you'd end up with like one-to-one -one odds, which was pretty bad, you don't want to yeah. attack with that. Uh, on these CRTs, anything around one-to-one -one is really, really, really bad for the attacker. Uh, in fact, that's, that's the way it is for a lot of war games, yeah. but I felt like this one is really bad. And, and then the other aspect was is that the Ethiopians have their own CRT. Yes, which was and it's slightly different, they lose I thought they less like they they could lose slightly less units. They could yeah they could lose slightly less, but they couldn't get as good odds. Right. There's no way to get a seven to one odd. I think their yeah. top out was four to one. I think. But it was really neat having. I I always oh, love yeah. a game that has multiple CRTs based on factions because yeah. I think that's a really easy way to get a game to make make things very different and for you to get a lot of the historical aspects yeah. of, of a conflict in there, you know, with weapon types and training and um, things like that. You know, two CRTs, everyone rolls differently, that's a really good way to do that. Yeah. Also, another element about those hidden units, because this was our first play, I didn't fully understand the different tribes and their ability, or not abilities, but their, their fighting prowess. That red tribe, man, had I really examined those at the beginning of the game, I would have been much more aggressive with them because they had quite a few big units. Yeah. Whereas some of the other tribes were more just defensive in nature. Um, so that also is interesting. To me, this game lends itself to a lot of unpredictability, a lot of oddities happening from the activation rolls to the bribing. But it also, I mean, you're going to have to play this three or four times to really get comfortable with at least the Ethiopians. I think the Italians are more straightforward. Yeah, more traditional. Yeah. Um, you have air power, you have some replacement points. Uh, but yeah, definitely an interesting design. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. And then once we're done with all that and you figured that out, there's a whole other <laughs> campaign yeah. with two totally with different... The beat, with the British forces coming yeah. in. Yeah, and the Italian forces by that time are also very different, so they got different right. unit composition as well. Right. And they're kind of on the way out, so it's entirely different. But all of them, they both campaigns play on the same map. Yeah. And there's some kind of borders and lines that are drawn on that you would kind of adhere to in different right. campaigns. Um, but all in all, I had a really good time playing this. So I think what we'll do is we're going to show you the board, um, and then we'll kind of wrap up with a few final thoughts. So here's a look at the map. And I'm just trying to get it all in. It's kind of one of those portrait style maps, so it doesn't necessarily fit the camera angle well. But uh, this is the end of our game. I had to call it at the end of turn five because I was so far behind um, that we didn't. We, 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 there was no point in playing to turn seven. Um, and like like we kind of talked about, the Italians they take negative victory points from all these step losses, and there's a big dead pile down here. Um, but they gain victory points by making progress and capturing the capital, these other regional uh, capitals, and then these victory hexes here, which are, these are called these ambers, and those are worth victory points as well. Um, there was a lot of fighting in these mountains as soon as I crossed out this border, and I just could not roll for my life, couldn't make these through. But you also have units that start down here, and what would become Somalia and Mogadishu, bringing up this second front from the south, 
and again, I, I didn't do this organized very well, but basically this initial campaign, you end up with this big push up here and the smaller pincer coming in from the bottom, and you're trying to split these tribal forces and keep them occupied, be able to punch through and take, the, take and meet in the middle. Um, there's a pretty strict stacking limit enforced in, at all times in the game, and but if you look at the counters here, what we're looking at here, you have pretty traditional values here. So you have an attack, a defense, and a move. Um, so you can kind of stack these together so you can add their combat factors. And they're also going to add their defensive values as well. The tanks are pretty weak. Their infantry support, it's 1935. But they've got this really fast movement. So if they get them on the roads, they can kind of plow along through, uh, through the map at a decent clip. Um, combat is done against adjacent hexes and you can combine hexes if you attack um, kind of from a flanking position this is um, you can get bonuses as well from doing that but that's pretty rare if you've surrounded someone things are going pretty well for you anyway um, so here's here's the combat results table for the Italians this is also for the British but if you're playing this early scenario the Ethiopians um, they they roll on this chart, and if you look, it's a much smaller chart. It goes from four to one odds down to one to three odds. Well, this one goes from one to three all the way to seven to one. So you, you know these um, kind of line forces can um, they're professional armies. They can employ much higher firepower, kind of thing, better training, better weaponry, that kind of stuff is is involved here. Um, there's also these holding boxes for these resource points um, and the air power which you can use to do kind of bombardments. You can actually drop like gas attacks as well with nerve agents and things, but whilst that's an effective military tactic, some of these events, which bring in the League of Nations, um, you might lose victory points for having done done that and done too much of that, because um, yeah, that's obviously frowned upon. Uh, oh. As far as the plates go, these are very, very good. I was very happy with these. There's two identical ones for each player. And then there's also um, a couple of summaries and bits and pieces as well. And there's a good setup chart. But really, the game is about moving and fighting and taking um, taking these key victory points. Um, the, this You'll see here, this is where the main, okay, this is Ethiopia here. A lot of it is this dark brown and almost kind of coffee brown here. This is rough terrain. And mountainous terrain it's very very slow and very tough going to both move through that and fight in that so that's why things like this road are all clogged up and really important for defensive positioning um, and, and coming in through the south here as well you basically get these choke points where unless you want to slow down and move through here which I felt like the Ethiopian tribesmen had an advantage because they've got better movement factors a lot of the time um, you know, you're going to get some really key battles going on in these places. And up here, you've got to maybe dig some of these roads. There's some road counters that you can dig, but that's hard to do and takes time to kind of make progress through these mountains or do some flanking maneuvers. But honestly, this is a very traditional war game. You, you line up your, your units, you're attacking adjacent hexes, and this combat results table, it was odds-based like we saw. You just roll a d6. Oh, let's see, I was on two to one odds, I rolled a two. This is the attacker and then the defender. So the attacker actually is gonna lose a step and the defender's not gonna lose anything on that roll. That was a bad roll. If you roll a six on that two to one table, different story. Um, the attacker loses once, only one and the defender loses two. So you can see these kind of middling ones are still really bad. You don't want to attack really until you can start getting into three to one four to one and better, this is where your odds start getting very, very favorable. Now, it's it can be hard to do that, but that's why you have these air power points. And these air power points, so this little chrome, you kind of pop him on here before you do your attacks, and basically you roll on this air table chart. So I'm gonna roll a D6, and I rolled a three. Because he's in the mountains, there's a negative two modifier, so I'm a one, which is no effect. But if I can start rolling fives and sixes up here, 
I can just, he just has to randomly remove one or two of these. Well, now it's just one guy or two guys. And then it's much easier for me to get those good odds on the table and make good progress. So there is this kind of um, making this concerted effort on this huge um, campaign scale, which, which I really like. I always enjoy trying to get all my different moving parts going together. And there's some really interesting choices to make with this air support stuff. You can do these bombardments like that, or you can save them, and you can just, you can just kind of cash them in, so to speak, for just a, a, a shift in the odds base table, kind of they're just doing air support in the combat, or you can do that pre-combat bombardment, or you can do those gas attacks, which, you know, end up um, hurting infantry even more, and you get these pretty, pretty nasty gas counters as well. But again, there's a lot of risk involved in having, doing that, and uh, having the, uh, the rest of the world community see you doing that. Um, the, yeah, that's, that's pretty much frowned upon, so when you start getting into, uh, let's see if I can find them. Yeah, L League of Nations, there's this whole event, so if you pull this on your turn, you consult the events chart, and the events chart down here, let's me pick that up, oh. let's see, so you've got here, the international community is outraged by your use of chemical weapons, um, you can't conduct gas attacks on barbarments, this, the turn that you pull this, you roll a dice. If it's less than the current Italian bombing attacks marker, you deduct one VP at the end of the scenario. Um, the Italian player can no longer track the number of gas attacks. So if you do a bunch of those, you risk losing victory points. Now in this game, I got utterly crushed. I had negative victory points at the end. That's how bad it was. But it's possible where that could, you know, that one victory point could make the difference between winning, losing, or having like a major victory or, or a small tactical victory. Um, so that's that's something you've got to take, take care of. And that's what I really enjoyed about this game, is that as traditional as it is, you know, hex encounters, move attack, defense, odds based combat, I love that. It's simple, it's familiar to me, but there was enough of these nuances, enough of the history in there, um, that made this game really come alive and I had a great feel for the campaign and for, and for what both sides really experienced in this so what we'll do now is we'll just wrap up with a few um, kind of final thoughts here um, before we do I just want to show you these, these stacks of the uh, of the tribe counters here so they all have this unknown combat factor we kind of talked about and neither side knows what these are and so you engage in combat with them and you're like, okay, well, what is it? And so you both get to find out at the same time, okay, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight combat factors here. Whew. So you might think, oh, there's only five units here, maybe they've all got ones, so there's a lot of risk involved in there. And sometimes you do, sometimes those are zeros and you don't know what they are and you end up like, oh, I was defending with these paper tigers and they get blown out the way. Sometimes this is a stack with threes, fours, and twos, and it ends up being a really big defensive force that you can't dislodge from the mountain. So this is a really neat little part. Um, the way that these guys activate is cool. Um, each one of these activates with a die roll. You basically, you might get a full activation with kind of a five or a six. With a three, with a three I think you start getting into half activations. And it's kind of here, so... A three is a half activation, so you can literally activate half of that colored units, and a two or one is a no activation at all. Um, so things can get pretty hairy for you if you start rolling poorly, and that's that's you know that's what we talked about. I can spend one of my precious resource points to give you a negative one on that activation roll. So this is a one. This you know that's also a one. That's just my rolling. But, you know, you start going, if you roll a four for a full activation, while well, I bribed you, you only get a half activation. And it's stuff like that that really makes this game shine. So, like I said, we're going to wrap up with a few final thoughts here and uh, kind of get you on your way. So, that's a look at the map and at least some of the mechanics. Um, I had a great time playing mm -hmm. this. Me uh, too. Just a totally different aspect of the war as well. Yeah. I think it was refreshing to play something that wasn't you know, European theater or Pacific theater. It's just right. a totally different thing. And I felt like 
that showed up in the mechanics. Mm -hmm. I felt like we were fighting in Ethiopia, we were fighting with tribesmen who were united under Haile Selassie, and that, you know, there was, but there was still, each, each tribe had to activate individually yeah. and could be bought And they couldn't be in the same hexes. You get that, yeah. you get that old, the kind of the bad blood between so and the way they're yeah. united, but not too united. Yeah. Um, well, and, and that was another thing we didn't talk a whole lot about in the opening, but the event shits. There are yes. some event shits that are random. You draw them and they have different effects. One, I, I got some replacement points early on. I think one, you had some traitors pop up in the midst of, of my tribes yeah, that, that started I decided a small rebellion. A rebellion. There were some other... Th those are very cool because, once again, they insert that element of historical accuracy and a little bit about the conflict. We learn stuff, yes. which I, I thought was cool. The other thing, and we talked about it earlier, but the terrain yeah. is really a third player in this game. Absolutely. And there are, are road building chits that we didn't really get into, which we maybe should have. I definitely should have done that. But you can build roads that will connect different points and allow for reinforcements to move quicker. Also allow you to maybe potentially get around a flank, which I thought was a very interesting... You know, that's an interesting bit of chrome. Yeah, I think. Dig, digging roads through those mountains yeah. makes it much easier for your reinforcements to get to, out to the front if you make good progress. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I had a great time. I love those event chits because whilst they do some pretty interesting things, then I don't feel like they were game breaking either. No, no. I wasn't just like, oh, you know, I put on a bunch of guys and wipe the board. Yeah, they were, but they were cool. Yeah, they were muted but gave you good flavor. Yeah. And they, there's a the card that tells you what they do is does a really good job of explaining, explaining those. And I felt like the play aids in this game were very good. Yeah. The only thing I would have liked to have seen was um, in the play aid, the terrain effects chart doesn't show the pictures the type. of the terrain. Yeah. And that's that, that, that was a little hard on the map. Yeah. But I would have liked to see it in the play aid with yeah. it just for ease of reference. Yeah. But outside of that, I don't know if I had that many like. Uh, Issues yeah. with the game, or it was just really was well done, and I was very impressed with learning something entirely different about the yeah. war and how easy that was. Yeah, you know, I, I mechanics wise, easy to learn from from a we've played a lot of war games. Right, this was simple from right. the, what I know from those, but how much history and how much of a different aspect of the war that, that I picked up about. We were on Wikipedia looking at bits and pieces. Yeah, just from, trying to understand who the leaders were. Yeah. About. Yeah. And that's what I want in a war game, yep. especially something that different. Yeah. And I think it did a good job of, you know, shining light on something that's probably often forgotten. Right. Uh, the other thing I think is really cool about that this is a beautiful game. Yes. Uh, Multicolored counters, great looking map. I know the Ethiopian flag is that green, yellow, red. Very attractive. The art is fantastic. Here's a tribal uh, warrior there. I, I just think they did a great job in the presentation of this game. It really drew me in. I remember when this thing came out last year, I thought, ooh, that looks good. And, and this truly was a case. It looks good. It played well. And, and really is, is a game that I enjoyed quite a bit. Yeah, I, uh, how I judge this game is... I want to play the next scenario. I, I want to. Yeah. I'd love to set it up if it wasn't midnight and yeah. and go ahead and play it. Uh, play it all the way through. But well done, Javier. Lots of neat mechanics. The, the other thing we talked about during the game, there are no zones of control in this game. Yes, and I think that's perfectly thematic. One once again, we talked about the terrain as that third player. That terrain prevents from exerting any type of zone of control. Yeah, you, it, and I like that. The, the trained army, so the Italians and the British have an option to force march. Right. But it's really dangerous to do that. You end up having to like roll extra dice and bad things happen. Yeah. But it's it the terrain slows you down, so the roads become really Vital. important to, to fight. That's why digging those roads is important. And then and there's like these the kind of the strong points, mm -hmm. what they call them the ambers, which yeah. are worth victory points to the Italians hanging onto those, defending those, because those are in the mountains, you get this really cool tactical aspect yep. to this very large uh, operational level game. And I think that that is a great credit to the game as well. Yeah, yeah. The, I don't know how much playtesting they did with like, 
this has to be a mountain hex and this right. one doesn't. How much? Oh, I, they I think they did some of that because there were some points early on that I thought, if only that mountain wasn't there. And you can tell, yeah, you know, they're like this is rough terrain versus mountain yep. terrain, and it and it forces you to they make move some differently. Really yeah. This desert here, I was like, yeah. it's impossible, and I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah, like I could just swim by around down here. Yep. Couldn't do any of that stuff. Yep. And it was it was killer at times. Yeah. So I, I had a blast playing this, um, so I appreciate you guys tuning in. This has been Lion of Judah from Compass Games. I've been Alexander from theplayers8.com. And I'm Grant.